Hey everyone, I'm Greg from Bell's Backyard Garden. Thanks for joining in. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about cucumber plants and the problems that you're having. Just like we always do in this channel, we're gonna be answering the specific questions that you've sent me of the problems that you're encountering. We're gonna talk about uh, cucumber plants that only have male flowers, cucumber plants that are only producing female flowers. Some of you are experiencing, experiencing your cucumbers that are drying up, falling off the vine. We're gonna talk about what causes cucumbers to be misshapen, what causes them to become bitter, and also some of of you have uh, asked questions of why you're seeing these new variety of cucumbers that are coming in that have black spikes of them instead of white spikes. Now before we get to that I want to take just a few minutes of your time and I know your time is precious so I appreciate you just dealing with me on this one. Uh, Bell's Backyard has moved locations. Now why is that important to you? Because I'm learning this whole thing all over again. I moved into a different zone so I'm going to be experiencing uh, in this area I'm going to be experiencing new weather patterns, new soil conditions, new new water conditions, new pests, new threats, new predatory insects, and we're also going to be experiencing things like how do you deal with bears, deer, rabbits, coyotes, foxes. Uh, we're going to go through all of those issues and also I'm going to be having the same problems that you are and I'm going to be able to show you the solutions that I've come up with in order to fix that problem. Now this is more of a community channel so I'm also going to be relying on you. Not every gardener knows everything so if you happen to see something that you think may be better leave it into the comment section below. If there's a question that you have just like always send it to me I'll respond back or I'll do some more research for you and I'll put it on this video but now if any is a good time to subscribe to this channel. But now let's go ahead and jump right into those questions that we've got. Guys, thanks for your time in advance. Let's get right to it. All right, the first problem we're gonna talk about is going to be a cucumber plant that is only producing female flowers. Now, this was actually pretty interesting and I had to go in depth and do some research on this one. Um, if it's only producing female flowers, if it's only producing female flowers, it could be for two reasons. One, there's two types of, there's actually three, there's two types that we're going to be concerned with of cucumber plants. One is the uh, monoecious, I think is the way that they call it, and the other one's the gynoecious. The monoecious, if it's correct, it produces male and female flowers, and then the other one, the gynoecious one, only produces um, female flowers. Now, let's just look at the gynoecious one. The gynoecious one is designed to produce all of those female flowers to produce a crop all at the same time rapidly. They're genetically engineered to do that. One of the downfalls to that is you still need to have those male flowers in order to get the pollination you need in order for your fruit to grow. The only way to do that is to plant a different type of crop, a different type of cucumber. Now you don't need a lot of male flowers in order to have successful pollination of that particular type of plant. So if you do that, then you will be able to get your pollination across the board and you'll be able to get a pretty good crop. Now uh, this particular uh, viewer that, that saw the last video said that he went next door and he found somebody that had male flowers and he self and hand pollinated. He had two of them, two plants that had about 25 different flowers on it. I think that's going to work, but I think that's probably not the problem because you said that you got it from one of your local suppliers. Um, local garden centers generally don't have this kind of uh, cucumber plant. But if you do get one and you see, and you buy a packet of seeds and you look in there and you see one seed that's miscolored and you see that G-Y-N-O type cucumber that's in there, um, that means that you've got that kind of plant. That, co that one colored seed that's in there is going to be that one different type of cucumber plant that's gonna produce those male flowers for you. If you do have that, uh, and you don't, or if you're buying those type of plants from your center, then make sure that you buy another variety that's going to produce those male flowers, that's going to give you some cross-pollination, and you'll have a great crop. These are, these are good plants if you want to do like pickling, where they're all going to come in at the same time, and you'll have plenty of crop in order to have enough volume to be able to pickle. But I don't think that's where the, the problem lies, because you bought that at a garden center. Generally, they don't sell those. But when I did some more research and what you have done when we talked about the nutrients and everything that you've done before, I went back into the area that you lived and I looked at your weather pattern. Now, when you sent me this, you said you already had the female flowers. Well, I went back to the history, your weather history, and it looked like in the middle of May for about 10 days, you had a very cold, session that went from 60 degrees down into the low 50s. Now that's about the same time that your plant should be 
uh, producing or starting to produce its flowers and it's going to make a determination or male or female. Now cucumber plants are very temperature sensitive which means that they will produce the type of flower based off of the temperature. During that time uh, female flowers are more predominant because a male flower likes to be produced into the mid to high 70s um, preferably up into the 80s and that's what you're experiencing right now so i think what happened in your time frame if you go back and look at the history you're going to see that that cold spell right there is when your flowers were starting to produce and that's why you got all your female flowers now i don't think because the, we're into the growth the life cycle of this plant that it's going to produce any male flowers but i am interested to see if your self-pollination from your neighbor worked now how do we prevent that in the future i talk about success succession planning all the time um, success planning would have worked incredibly well in this particular instance and it's something that I learned from you now that I am definitely going to do uh, because I'm living in this new environment. If we would have started a, a second planting or a second plant introduced about two weeks after the original planting, um, it would have circumvented or it would have been behind the growth schedule and you would have gotten some male flowers because you jumped right back up into 78, 80 degrees and it would have been perfect. So one thing that you can do to actually try to get along with mother nature a little bit better, plant the crops that you want, specifically in cucumbers, and then about two weeks later, plant that second crop. It takes about two weeks for the female flowers to appear after the male flowers do. So if you have that two week time frame and then you have the other plants introduced to it, they should be coming in at the same time where you produce those male and female flowers. So guys, give that a try and let me know what you think. Okay, on to the next question. Nay, I'm not quite sure where you are in the world. Mark, you're in Nevada. Um, they both left a question saying, hey, my cucumber plants are only producing male flowers. Conversely to what we just talked about up in New York where it was all female flowers. This could be a couple things too. Like we talked about, it could be temperature wise. If you're in a lot of heat, like you're in Nevada, probably you're gonna be above 80 degrees. That has a tendency for the plant to throw off those male flowers. Now what you can do if that's the case is you can shade the plant and that should help uh, slow it down a little bit and it should start producing your female flowers. Secondly, also your Secondly, and also, that makes no sense. But secondly, what you want to do is look at the amount of nutrients you're feeding the plant. Now, cucumbers are very, very heavy feeders, but they feed different ways throughout their life cycle. Now, at the beginning, your plant is going to require a lot of nitrogen. That's going to produce all of those healthy green leaves, very heavy stems, and the flowers are going to start to come out. But once it goes into the fruiting phase, it needs more potassium. So what you may want to do is back off on the nitrogen and also introduce a potassium-rich organic fertilizer. And also you can use uh, Epsom salt to introduce the magnesium uh, into the soil. It's a great micronutrient that helps the plant pick up uh, that potassium that it needs to produce the fruits. All right. Also, let's look at timing. One of the other things too, if you're only seeing those male flowers for about two weeks, that's perfect. That's exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Cucumbers are a wonderful plant and they have a very unique growing cycle. So they'll throw the male flowers out first. And the reason why they do that is the bees, their pollinators, want to get used to coming back to that same spot over and over and over again. So once the plant blows, throws out those male flowers, it, those bees start realizing that this is a place for a normal morning meal and they start showing up. That way it guarantees that when the female flowers come up, that they'll be able to get pollinated successfully. Something to take a look at. I hope that helps. Now let's move on to the next question. Okay, on to the next question and also introducing you guys to another type of cucumber plant. We talked about the ones that only do male flowers, male and female flowers, and the ones that only produce female flowers. There's also one called a parthenotropic, I think is what it's called. Uh, probably butchering that word but this plant is designed to have male and female components to it within the same flower so it can self-pollinate generally you're going to see those in the grocery stores those are your seedless cucumbers uh, the good side of those they're incredibly easy to grow uh, it does guarantee pollination they're great for hoop houses if you don't have a lot of pollinators in your area this may be a plant that you want to have if you want to have those fresh cucumbers uh, but also barb uh, with the comments that you made where you have these plants uh, it sounds like you've been a successful gardener in the past uh, and these they started to grow they're growing to about two two and a half inches long then they start to dry up and the plants themselves they the plants look really good uh, and then they start to drop off 
that's also a couple things. Um, heat, again, we talked about it. And also what we just talked about too is, um, is your nutrient requirements. Normally, you're probably going into the normal feeding cycle, but these plants like this, your seedless cucumbers, their need uh, for nutrients is a lot higher in that potassium level than a normal cucumber is because they are gonna grow longer, they are gonna grow faster, and they're gonna grow bigger. So a lot of what you may be seeing there is going to be the fact that they've switched over to that and you start seeing their two and two and a half inches and man, those suckers are hungry. That's when we need to make sure that potassium is already there. Make sure that you try to get a liquid type of organic potassium that you can introduce for those guys to get picked up really fast. And that should uh, help you with your process that's there. But let me know how that works. I don't think the heat's going to be too much of an issue into your area. If it's pushing the 90s, 95s, that plant's going, I'm done, and it's going to be dropping off those fruits. So I hope that's not the issue, but please let me know um, what you think or what happened to your plants. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next question, Elizabeth. I love this question and I love answering it. It's uh, Elizabeth asked, why are her cucumbers bitter? This gives us a chance to look at the mechanisms that a cucumber has and a better understanding of the plant that itself. Now, a cucurbacin is a biochemical that's inside, generally inside of the leaves or the stems of the plant. Now, this is a natural occurring uh, biochemical that's there. It, what it does is it causes the leaves and the stems to become bitter so that your herbivores that are out there aren't going to eat the plant before it gets uh, a chance to produce its fruit. Now let's look at what the purpose of a cucumber plant is. Its purpose is just to propagate itself, to be able to develop more more plants, that's its sole purpose. So when a cucumber becomes under stress, what it wants to do is it wants to be able to recover, it wants to be able to produce a nice, beautiful, edible fruit so that the herbivore, once it's ready, is gonna come in, eat it, take it with it, and then deposit it out somewhere else so that that plant can continue to grow. Well, what happens when a plant comes under stress, specifically a cucumber plant comes under stress, what it does is it takes that cucurbacin and it allows it to leach into the fruit temporarily so that it has time to recover to so that it can start to develop a good healthy fruit so that makes it that bitter taste that's in there so it's trying to tell the herbivores that are out there that that fruit's not ready yet that it's under stress and it wants more time to be able to recover develop grow and produce a fruit that's going to be a little more healthy where those seeds are going to be good enough for it to carry off and to be able to continue to grow somewhere else so what causes that to happen uh, a couple things and i've got them written down here dry conditions over a long period of time will do that it puts the plant under stress and it'll allow that um, cucurbacin to get into the the uh, fruit itself, uh, lean soil, if there's not enough uh, nitrogen potassium mixture that's in there, it can also do that. It'll create stress for the plant. Um, too much competition. So if the plants are too close together, it still puts it under stress and it can't produce the fruits that it wants to and that's going to cause the bitterness to it. Now if you're seeing that at a very early stage, uh, that's it could actually recover from it. What it'll do, what it'll do is it, the plant will recover, correct those deficiencies that are out there. The plant will recover, it'll start growing the fruit again, and it'll start diluting that cucurbacin that's in there and it'll kind of dilute the taste of the bitter cucumber. If the cucumber tastes a little different than before, that could be the case. Cucurbacin is not gonna hurt you uh, unless you, well, it's just not gonna hurt you. Um, so continue to the, correct the issues that are there, let the fruit continue to grow, and I think that you're gonna find a correction to it. If not, it's probably not a lot you can do with it. But I hope that helps. I hope that that uh, is a better understanding of why that occurred, and hopefully that you have good luck in the future. Elizabeth, thanks for it. Now let's get on to the next question. Okay, my last one uh, comes from a lot of you where you were talking about the black spikes that you're seeing on your cucumbers. What are those? You're used to seeing those white spikes that are on a cucumber, the traditional cucumbers that you're growing. Uh, from those of you that are talking, it seems like that you were growing the cucumbers that you all, always do, but for some reason that you're starting to see black spikes on it. Well, what you're probably seeing is cross-pollination. Let's go back to why the black spikes. Black spikes are traditionally on a Japanese style cucumber. Now these cucumbers are used in the culinary world um, everywhere. The, they are a little milder, they have a little bit of a higher nutritional value, they have a little more vitamin K to it and a little bit of a higher water soluble um, fiber that's in there. 
Uh, so they're used those a little bit more. Those are absolutely fine. And you're starting to see more and more of those being put on the shelves as seeds and also as plants uh, inside of your garden centers. Uh, just make note of that when you pick them up and see if it's some type of a Japanese variety. That's probably what you're seeing that's there. They're great cucumbers. They grow fast. They're a, a little bit larger and they grow a little bit faster. Now, for those of you who are, are were expecting those little white spikes and you're getting black, I think that you are probably um, the lucky recipient of a cross-pollination. If you check with your neighbors or if you check with anybody that's within you know half mile or so of you, you may find that these bees have, or your pollinators have gone to those plants and then introduce those to your cucumbers that you see now and you're starting to see those black spikes so that's just the way mother nature works i love seeing when that happens but don't worry about it they're absolutely fine if those black spikes bother you when you pick them um, you can take them off all you have to do is just take a dry rag uh, grab the cucumber and just rub it they'll pop right off to it but that's what you're seeing is probably a japanese variety guys uh, again that's the last that I've got for this video. I appreciate your time. I know that it's valuable. If you do have any questions, please send them to me. I'll respond back the best that I can. If it's a lot of questions on the same problem, then I'm gonna go ahead and create a video for you to see. If those of you that are out there, because not all gardeners know everything, uh, please write down what your solutions have been and I'll introduce those to the rest of the community too because the purpose of this channel is just for us all to become better gardeners, to be able to produce better fruit, to be able to provide more for our community and our family. But until the next video, guys, I appreciate it very much. I'm Greg from Bell's Backyard. Thanks for watching.